My name is Sarah Sheridan and I'm going to read from Brighton Bell, which is the first in the Mirabel Bevan series of mysteries. Um, this is the part where Mirabel comes back from her lunch break and she finds her boss, Big Ben McGuigan, steaming his head um, because he has a cold in the office. Mr. McGuigan, Mirabel coughed. Big Ben emerged with his chubby face flushed. He'd been out all morning collecting money from what he referred to as his friends in the slums. He had seemed in perfectly good health when he left. Mirabel, Mirabel, not so great, he said, and disappeared back under the towel from where he mumbled, put on the kettle, I need a hot drink. Mirabel complied. She made two cups of strong milky tea and laid one on Big Ben's desk. It was most unlike him to ask for anything. In the 18 months since Mirabel had taken the job, she hadn't had a single request. Unbidden, she opened the mail, dealt with the ledger, the files, the banking and the invoices. She answered the telephone, leaving accurate and detailed messages that required no further explanation on Big Ben's tidy desk. Occasionally, a client might come to the office in pursuit of their money. Most days, there was a visit from at least one debtor, either ready to pay or give their excuses which they seemed to clutch to their chests and then let out too quickly like machine gun fire. Mirabel Bevan dealt with everything briskly. Big Ben appreciated her efficiency and she appreciated his absence or on his fleeting visits to the office, his silence. After everything she'd been through, it was the perfect job. Are you ill? Mirabel inquired gently. One of Big Ben's roomy blue eyes peered through a crack in the towel. He removed the tea from the desktop and disappeared back beneath the swathe of material. The sound of him drinking ensued. Cold, influenza, maybe pneumonia, he said. A shadow of amusement passed across Mirabel's face. Big Ben was six feet two inches in height and he weighed 200 pounds. An ex-professional boxer, he'd been a sergeant major during the war. The thousands of conscripts who had passed through his capable hands had endowed him with a highly honed capacity for judging human nature and a complete inability to accept any form of excuse. He'd set up McGuigan and McGuigan after he demobbed and quickly gained a good reputation for chasing other people's money on commission. Big Ben, it transpired, was the only McGuigan, the sole employee of the firm until Mirabel arrived. But he thought that the dual name sounded more professional, so he doubled up. It was all very businesslike, which was something both Ben McGuigan and Mirabel Bevan had recognised in each other from the first moment they'd met. The interview for the job lasted two minutes, exactly long enough to establish that he knew what he wanted and she knew what to do. Until today, Mirabel had never seen Big Ben display any sign of weakness. Do you think it might be a good idea to go home? She suggested tentatively. Big Ben emerged from under the towel and took a sip of tea. 72-hour job, he said.